So in this section, we're going to look at quick ways that we can predict the formula of an ionic compound that will form when a metal reacts with a non-metal. So we kind of did this before in the last video where we were looking at the reaction between magnesium and chlorine, and we were able to get the ratio of the atom types involved. What we're going to do in this video is look at how we can speed up that process and eliminate the need to draw the Lewis diagrams. So we know that atoms like to lose or gain electrons until they obtain a, um, a noble gas-like configuration. And in particular, they're going to obtain the configuration of the nearest noble gas because that will require the smallest loss or a gain of electrons. So sodium has 11 electrons. And if it loses one, to form a sodium cation, it will have 10 electrons. And what has 10 electrons? Neon, which is its nearest noble gas. Calcium has 20 electrons. It likes to lose two electrons and form the calcium two plus cation, which has 18 electrons. What has 18 electrons? Argon, which is the noble gas that is nearest to it. So you can see this here, the metals lose electrons until they obtain the noble gas configuration of the noble gas that is nearest them. Now, non-metals, which are over on the right of the periodic table, they like to gain electrons and they keep gaining electrons until they obtain a noble gas electron configuration. So phosphorus, has 15 electrons and it likes to gain three forming the p3 minus um, ion anion in particular which has 18 electrons and 18 is the same number of electrons as argon now oxygen has eight electrons and it likes to gain two electrons to form the o2 minus um, anion which has 10 electrons which is the same as neon. So you get the idea, they just keep gaining until they get a noble gas configuration and then they're happy and there's no more gain of electrons. So if we want to summarize all of this in one thing, group 1a, group 2a and group 3a metals, they all love to form plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3 ions that gives them a noble gas configuration. You can see here, francium loses one, gets the same electron configuration as radon. Radium loses two, leaves it with the same electron configuration as radon. Aluminum loses three, leaves it with the neon electron configuration, okay? Now, group 7A, group 6A, and group 5A nonmetals, they love to gain one, two, and three um, electrons. I should, that should be 6A, there we go. So if um, fluorine gains one, ends up with 10 electrons, oxygen gains two, ends up with 10 electrons, nitrogen gains three, ends up with 10 electrons. So what we can say is that the nitrogen group loves to gain three and form minus three. The oxygen group loves to gain two, form minus two. The fluorine group loves to gain one and form minus one. Now carbon, the carbon group, group 4A, it's a mixture of metals and non-metals. The metals love to form cations, plus four, and the non-metals, which is really just the carbon, and form anions minus four. We don't really see plus four and minus four anions and cations that often. So we'll often use the term isoelectronic and isoelectronic means that two things that have the same number and configuration of electrons. So one way of summarizing what we just said is that the group 1A through 3A metals form ions that are isoelectronic with the noble gas that comes before them, right? So the noble gas that comes before sodium, we 
which is in the row above, is neon. So, so the sodium ion with its 10 electrons in this arrangement here is isoelectronic with neon, which also has 10 electrons in the same arrangement. Non-metals, those that are in groups 5a through m7a, they form anions that are isoelectronic with the noble gas that comes after them. So, so the fluoride ion, which has 10 electrons in this arrangement, is isoelectronic with neon, which also has 10 electrons in the same arrangement. And if you look on your periodic table, you'll see that fluorine is here and then neon follows immediately afterwards. So if we look at sulfur, sulfur here has 10, 18 electrons in the same arrangement as argon, which also has 18 electrons. So those two things are isoelectronic, and then sulfur is over here, and then argon is at the end of its row. So for metals, they end up with the noble gas electron configuration of the noble gas that comes before them. For non-metals, they end up with the noble gas configuration of the noble gas that comes after them. So the cool thing about the representative elements is you always know the charge on the ion that, it, that they're going to form. We know that if it's in group 1a, it's going to be plus 1. If it's in group 2a, it's going to be plus 2. If it's in group 3a, it's going to be plus 3 for all of the metals that are in there. If it's in group 4a, it's going to be minus 4 for the metal and plus 4 for the non-metals. If it's in group 5a, it's going to be minus 3 for all of those guys. If it's in group 2a, it's going to be minus 2 for those guys. If it's in groups, if it's in groups um, 6a, it's going to be minus 2. If it's in group 7a, it's going to be minus 1. So this is really cool because what it means is that we can predict the ionic compound that will form when a metal and a non-metal react without having to go through the hassle of drawing out Lewis diagrams. So here's a good example. It says what compound will form when sodium is reacted with oxygen? So sodium is a metal, oxygen is a non-metal, so they're going to form an ionic compound. And so what we need to do is figure out the charges on each of the ions. And from there, we can easily figure out the formula. So sodium is the metal and it's in group 1A. So we know that it's going to form a plus 1 ion. Oxygen is the non-metal and it's in group 6A. And we know that elements in group 6A form minus 2 ions. So... When we look at these charges, we see that they are not equal and opposite. So to get the formula, we're going to do the crossover procedure. So the charge on one becomes the subscript on the other, except for we never need a subscript of one. So we end up deciding that our compound that will form will be Na2O. So this is really cool. We can now predict the formula of compounds that form when a metal reacts with a non-metal. Okay, so the problems in Alex are relatively straightforward. So this one is all about predicting and naming ionic compounds formed when two elements come together. So what you have to do first of all is decide does it form an ionic compound. In order to form an ionic compound, you need a metal and a non-metal. So in the first row, we've got metal, non-metal, so it will form an ionic compound. In the second row, we've got non-metal, metal, so it will form an ionic compound. In the third row, we've got non-metal, metal, so it will form an ionic compound. And in the fourth row, we've got non-metal, metal, so again, it'll form an ionic compound. So in this case, it looks like they all form ionic compounds. And all I'm doing is just looking at the position of these elements in the periodic table. So now to get the empirical formula, I need my handy dandy um, periodic table that's been labeled with the charges. So here we go. It's always metal first followed by non-metal. So we've got Mg and Mg forms a two plus. 
oxygen, oxygen forms a two minus. They have equal and opposite charges, which means no crossover. They just combine one to one. Magnesium is a representative element, so it doesn't need any Roman numerals in its name. So this is just going to be called magnesium oxide. Remember that for monatomic anions, I just named by giving the stem name and changing the ending to IDE. All right, let's move on to something um, more complex. In the second row, lithium It's in group 1A, so it's plus 1. Oxygen, still 2 minus. They don't have equal and opposite charge, so I'm going to do crossover. So I need two lithiums and one oxygen. I can't simplify that, so I'm just going to leave it V. Now, because lithium is in group 1A, it doesn't need Roman numerals in its name. So this is just going to be lithium oxide. All right, let's do the third one. We've got chlorine, which is in group 7A. It's going to form a minus 1 with cesium, which is in group 1A, right at the bottom, it's going to form a plus 1. So there's cesium, and you can see that that's plus, and here's chlorine, and you can see that that's minus 1. So these guys are just going to come together 1 to 1 because they have equal and opposite charges. So the name of this guy, cesium, doesn't need Roman numerals because it's in group 1A, and then the anion, take the stem name. We have tables of stem names. Change the ending to IE, cesium chloride. Okay, so our final one here, our metal is lithium. So Li plus, because lithium's in group 1A. And then that's combining with fluoride. Fluorine's over in group 7A, so that's minus 1. These guys have equal and opposite charge so they're going to combine together in a one-to-one -one ratio and then naming it lithium doesn't need roman numerals because it's in group 1a representative element cations don't need roman numerals and then the stem name for fluorine is flur and then the ending ide so lithium fluoride okay so hopefully that was helpful um, just very easy to predict the formula of an ionic compound if you know the charges of the um, anions that will be formed by the metal and the nonmetal. Hope you found the video helpful and yeah, good luck with everything.